With a tempestuous history of imperial colonization and institutionalized racism, it is no wonder that South Africa's educational system is and has been under major reform in the past 20 years. Understanding where this country is currently first requires a look back to where this country has been historically. Beginning in 1653 with the Dutch East India Company, South Africa, specifically the Cape of Good Hope, now known as Cape Town, was a coveted piece of geography for European colonizers such as the British and Dutch, who fought over this territory until 1806 when the British claimed victory. South Africa remained under British rule until 1931 when it was granted independence under the Statute of Westminster. By 1948, Afrikaners of Dutch descent and white citizens joined forces by creating the National Party, which is notorious for its institutionalized racism, also known as apartheid. The apartheid system was put in place largely to maintain English and white Afrikaner control and power of the country's resources. The 1940s marked an economic boom for the country that needed manual labor in order to continue. Thus, white South Africans enforced policies to keep black South Africans subservient and in low socioeconomic class with little influence or decision-making ability so that they would continue doing the manual labor. Under apartheid, South Africans were divided into four distinct groups. Whites, Africans or Bantu peoples, coloreds or people of mixed descent, and Indians, immigrants from India. Categorization was based primarily on skin color and each group had a unique position in society, which was reinforced by distinct political, social, and cultural arrangements, including separate social and political spheres. While the apartheid era officially began in 1948, laws and policies separating racial groups in South Africa were implemented long before that. The Natives Land Act of 1913 restricted the land that could be owned by black citizens to about 7%, later increased to 13%. Under this act, blacks could not rent land unless they also worked that land. This policy remained throughout apartheid. Africans, or Bantu peoples, were also forcibly relocated from urban areas to homelands, or Bantu stands, that were mostly located in rural, desolate, underprovided parts of the country. Black South Africans were severely restricted in the jobs they could hold, activities in which they could partake, and even when and where they could travel, needing special passes in order to travel outside of their designated Bantu stand. Physical separation was accompanied by educational division, with separate schooling infrastructures for each racial group. Prior to apartheid, schooling was mostly fragmented under a mission school style, attempting to perpetuate colonialist ideologies. With the Bantu Education Act of 1953, later named the Black Education Act, the National Party had the power to take over administration of any South African school. The Ministry of Education during apartheid controlled teacher salaries as well as school standards and curriculum, using schooling during apartheid to ingrain racism, systematically conditioning black students that racial inequality was normal and natural. In stating his philosophy as to the education of black South Africans, Hendrik Verward, Minister of Native Affairs, said, There is no place for the Bantu in the European community above the level of certain forms of labor. What is the use of teaching the Bantu child mathematics when it cannot use it in practice? That is quite absurd. Education must train people in accordance with their opportunities in life, according to the sphere in which they live. Financially during apartheid, black South African schools received significantly less funding. In 1953, the government spent eight times as much overall on white students as it did on black students. Bantu education was funded primarily through taxation of people living in Bantu stands. After much struggle and almost half a century of apartheid and its racial indoctrination, South Africa became a formal democracy in 1994, freely electing Nelson Mandela as its first president. In his book, Long Walk to Freedom, Mandela writes, education is the great engine of personal development. It is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine, that a child of farm workers can become the president of a great nation. Educational reforms began almost immediately as the apartheid separate education departments were dissolved to make way for a centralized department of education. Funding for education sought to balance the unequal distribution of resources. Education currently receives the largest chunk of the government's budget at 23.5 billion rand out of the nation's 1.06 trillion rand budget for 2013. Educational infrastructure has improved, though some previously non-white areas still do not have running water, toilets, electricity, desks, functioning libraries, computers, playgrounds, etc. The national government is seeking to alleviate some concerns by implementing such things as the National Schools Nutrition Program, which provides meals for over 8 million students. In terms of racial segregation, the South African Schools Act of 1996 established the right of every person to basic education and equal access. All public schools are now open to all students. This act also allows schools to levy fees, but prohibits schools from refusing entry to any student who cannot pay these fees. 
In 2011, 60% of public schools were no-fee schools. The other 40% charge parents as much as 20,000 Rand, or about $2,200 per student. These fees are added to money already provided by the South African government. One use of this extra money is giving teachers a top-up, or extra amount, on top of their government salary. Otherwise, all teachers with the same qualifications receive the same salary regardless of where they teach. These top-up stipends, however, attract better teachers to the wealthier schools. South Africa has roughly 15 million youth between the ages of 10 and 20, comprising over one-third of the total population. There is currently a high 95% participation rate in education for youth up to age 15, and an increasing number of students are completing the general education cycle ending at grade 9. Yet while completion rates rise, Literacy rates and exam scores are low, especially compared to other middle-income countries, and few students matriculate, largely due to low school standards and high university costs. Only one student in six goes on to university studies, and one-third of those drop out within the first year. Employers complain that university graduates are largely unemployed, unemployable, because university standards are so low. As part of its Schooling 2025 vision, South Africa has established goals for learners, teachers, principals, parents, and materials distribution. The goal for learners is that they attend school on time every day and take their schoolwork seriously, have access to computers, a good meal, and sporting and cultural activities, and have respectful relationships with friends and dependable teachers. The goal for teachers is that they are confident, well-trained, and continually improving their capabilities. South Africa has come a long way from British colonization and apartheid racism. There is still much work to be done as evidenced by the continuing education reforms being issued as South Africa works toward equitable quality education for all citizens.